In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the three actions that Apple added to shortcuts in iOS 14.5. Set voice and data, set orientation lock, and take screenshot. The set voice and data action is used to toggle your cellular data options, which are found in settings, cellular options under that roaming off option there. Then under voice and data, you'll see the options for 5G on, 5G auto, or LTE, or maybe 4G depending on your connection. I've made a shortcut that puts this into a menu so that you can quickly select those. There's also an option to set the SIM card here, so there's a way to switch back and forth quickly using shortcuts if you're a multi-SIM user. Plus the shortcut includes deep links into different areas of the settings app. Your cellular settings, your personal hotspot, low data mode, VPN settings, or even network statistics. The second action is take screenshot, and this is a little bit odd at first because it just immediately takes a screenshot if you run the shortcut. But if you added a wait action, then you can have a shortcut delay until you get to the certain spot where you want to take a screenshot. And then you can combine it with other actions like saving it to a specific photo album or saving it to Dropbox and even re-aiming it before you do that. So that can be pretty useful. I made shortcuts for taking a screenshot and then adding it to reminders so that you actually act on that screenshot instead of just saving it and collecting them in your photo library like I do. I also created a shortcut for sharing your home screen, and this uses the app Toolbox Pro, which has the ability to take you back to the home screen, and then it'll wait a split second and then take a screenshot. And it's also designed to show the dots of any widget stacks that you might be using, because I always think that's an interesting part of people's iOS 14 home screens that's not always obvious just from a regular screenshot. Plus I've created this whole extra process that uses the take screenshot action and uploads it into a specific folder in iCloud Drive, named the same way as my Mac, and then I have a different application on my Mac sync all of those together. It's pretty neat. I'll make a video about it in the future, but you can get early access to the write-up by signing up for my membership. Links in the description below. And then the last one is super handy. It's set orientation lock. And this is something that there's only one system-wide toggle for that's located in Control Center. And a lot of people either just leave it on all the time or never actually turn it on. If you're a person who does like to leave orientation lock on all the time, this action combined with shortcuts automations for apps could let you have per app settings for orientation lock. So say you leave it on all the time, but then anytime you open YouTube, it disables orientation lock so that whenever you want to turn your phone sideways and watch a video, you're good to go. Then you can have it when you actually close YouTube, it'll turn orientation lock back on and then you won't have any sort of weird wonkiness as you're moving around. So I actually have it set with a sleep automation for when wind down begins, because I figure if I get in bed and use my phone, I don't want it to turn sideways if I'm laying down or something like that. And then I also have an 8 a.m. automation that just automatically turns off orientation lock since most of the time I don't actually mind it. And occasionally I do turn my app sideways and like to use that mode, so that can be pretty handy. I also figured this could be interestingly used with an iPad. Say you wanted to use your device in portrait mode more often, you could run a shortcut that locks the device in that orientation and then opens your favorite reading app, and that way you can kind of be prompted to use that orientation a little bit more often. And that's it for iOS 14.5. Make sure to check all the links in the description for all the shortcuts that I showed in this video. Plus you can sign up for my membership and get a bunch of extra shortcuts and my whole iOS and Mac cross-platform workflow for that take screenshot action. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.